What is up guys, this is Astronox and today I'm gonna talk about how to counter Bazaar. We're gonna be talking about different ways to counter this OP hero, OP overpowered hero. There is so much packed into his kit. His skill 3 is ridiculous. You guys know about it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are just dodging him in uh, PvP, be it Arena, Guild Wars. Uh, maybe you ban him in World Arena. Well, I'll go over uh, some of the ways to uh, just counter him. You know, so uh, it's not 100%, you know, uh, reliable, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this stuff. So let's open Bazaar here. Uh, the thing is, I wanted to showcase Bazaar. I have him on account number three, and uh, well, I have him on account number two as well, but he's a hot. Uh, steaming pile of crap across uh, my accounts he doesn't have the speed uh, that I want you know and there is actually uh, a lot of players uh, well here in the uh, on the Europe server that uh, sort of like counter him on their defense uh, so yeah bizarre 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 so where is he he's here he's a mage earth and uh, his speed right his speed is at 108, so not not, not the worst thing to tr like sort of counter if you want to go first. But you can't rely on speed all the time with the you know minus uh, uh, plus and minus five percent speed roll when you uh, go on turn one. You could just get out sped because you got unlucky. You rolled a minus five percent. Uh, the enemy rolled uh, you know plus five percent. Uh, so, I mean, there's a variance of 10% speed, so uh, definitely not the most re uh, reliable strategy. If you're on equal footing in terms of gear, uh, then, yeah, you, it's like you have to over-gear the player, like, with speed by quite a bit. Uh, if you want to, like, heavily rely on that speed, that turn one, and you want to go first and all that. So, 108, definitely not the highest speed um, but yeah, his skill 3 has so much packed into it. I mean, it, it's quite ridiculous. You don't even need skill ups on this hero. That's how overpowered he is because it's all about that turn 1. If he follows with turn 2 with the hurricane, that's, uh, that's even worse. So you soul burn this thing on offense, of course. You apply an able to be uh, buff debuff for 2 turns. And the worst is that it decreases combat readiness by 30% uh, as well. So he can mess up your turn order of your team. It happened to me so many times and it definitely uh, is annoying. So yeah, the thing is he dispels, right? And then he applies unable to be buff debuff. And the worst is definitely that soul burn for 20 souls. You can uh, just equip a maxed out tag heals ancient book and you got the 20 souls at the start. So you ignore effect resistance, right? And uh, yeah, you ignore it. And no, no matter how much they have, 200%, it doesn't matter. You know, you will be dispelling their immunity sets, whatever buff they may have. And then you apply enable to be buff debuff and reduce combat readiness by 30%. It's it's crazy. So you you will see bazaar, of course, on offense. You will, uh, you will get attacked by bazaars. You... Um, you know, you will see them on uh, defenses in Arena and Guild Wars. The thing is, uh, definitely using him on offense is uh, the most powerful thing with uh, the Soul Burn. So he outspeed you. Uh, even even if you are playing against a Bazaar on defense, he will have a ton of effectiveness stacked up and he will uh, definitely mess you up real good. So how do you even deal with uh, this hero that is so overpowered and definitely need to be nerfed because too much is packed into this skill three, right? Uh, it, when I saw the buff, I was like, are you kidding me? This, uh, it, it's it's way too much. It, it, like it's, it's quite ridiculous. The ignore effect resistance. The thing is you can stack speed on this hero and that's it. Just stack speed. You don't have to worry about any other stat because you go first, right? And then uh, you have Tagil's Ancient Book. You got the 20 souls and you soul burn. You don't even need effectiveness. And you don't even need to worry about counter attacks, Elbrus and all that because he's he did his job, basically. So yeah, now for heroes that you can use to uh, hopefully one-shot him and like if you want to rely on, uh, you know, killing him so he doesn't go... You, uh, sh you should probably uh, rely on speed memory imprints, uh, at least one. Uh, there's uh, a few of them that are very powerful. So let me open up uh, our boy here, Shuri. 
Shuri is definitely uh, top tier in terms of, uh, you know, speed given to the uh, back and the top position. I mean, 14 speed and he's a four star. So uh, definitely on my recommended list. If you want to be cleaving, uh, then uh, yeah, that he's going to be able to do some extra damage. He's going to boost combat units of your team as well. Not for himself, but still, he's got that AoE. I mean, very solid hero. He's fire too, so uh, that's great. Fire heroes are definitely a way to counter Bazaar, but it's a 50% chance that he's going to be missing. Uh, so it's not 100% reliable, right? So uh, other th uh, heroes, like if you want to like go for the one shot, uh, of course, you have a list of uh, thieves. Uh, and uh, yeah, the one that I would, I would recommend, of course, uh, Assassin Coley. I mean, she's going to be getting the attack buff by herself out of this thing. And uh, I mean, her base speed is very good. 126, definitely going to be, uh, it, it gives you a lot of breathing room to actually land that, uh, well, to win the speed war and go first. The thing is, she actually have to worry about offensive stats, not only speed like Bazaar, OP Bazaar, that can just stack speed and do his job with uh, the soul burn. Um, I mean, on defense, right? You're attacking their defense. They, of course, have to stack a bunch of effectiveness, but it's not the same as, uh, you know, you need to one-shot them. You need to... Uh, you need to soul burn. Like, she doubles her damage when you soul burn. So that's 20 souls. You need Tagiri's, uh, Tagiri's Ancient Book. That's one, right? And then you need to up your, uh, you know, your attack, your speed. Of course, your speed, high priority there. Unless you're going to rely on a memory imprint, at least. And then the crit chance, the crit damage. I mean, uh, even the effectiveness on her, if you want to land the stun. <clears throat> if you want to kill here and silence. Uh, a lot of stuff to worry about, right? So uh, definitely a hero that is harder to, uh, to gear for, but she's definitely going to do her job very well if you are able to soul burn her, man. It's going to double her damage. Uh, I checked the multipliers and it definitely does uh, double her damage when you soul burn. It's crazy. It's crazy. An amazing hero, definitely not the easiest hero to actually obtain. Assassin Sid, he can definitely, you know, uh, murder Bazaar if he goes first. Uh, 128 uh, base speed is amazing. Uh, he definitely, I mean, he got buffed. So uh, there's, there's that as well. And if they're not wearing immunity set, well, you can just like silence with him, right? So there is that. Uh, you need to kill to get the attack buff increase, but still uh, you increase damage for only 10 souls here. I don't know the exact multipliers. I know that he does hit like a truck though. So you're all good. Assassin Coley, you will not need as much gear, I would say because uh, she has that attack buff, right? That she is uh, given. Of course, our uh, Earth Sid can definitely do the job uh, and he's got some amazing multipliers for only being a four star hero. Definitely a, uh, I mean, a top tier hero for being a uh, four star and he will definitely be able to kill Bazaar and uh, if you get that soul burn, yeah, especially, especially. And not only that, um, I mean, you got some speed uh, for your team. So you could always rely on a uh, combat readiness booster and uh, uh, you know, uh, have some uh, speed memory imprint or imprints on top of a combat readiness booster. If you're not confident that you're like, you're not gonna be able to like, let's say gear for your hero to be able to just one shot Bazaar, you might have to rely on a combat readiness booster. Uh, I mean, you could just use, of course, uh, if you do outspeed with the auxiliary lots, you'll just be able to uh, win, of course. Uh, you'll be able to take out Bazaar, even uh, more heroes, maybe their whole team while cleaving. So uh, auxiliary lots. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna jump between strategies or uh, heroes real quick. I mean, uh, we're talking about 108 speed, right? On uh, Bazaar, uh, on Oxlots, it's 112, and you can definitely gear Oxlots uh, for pure speed. So uh, yeah, with that uh, plus five, minus five speed roll initially, you still have that, uh, you know, four speed. To work with so that's not bad and with the speed set it's going to give you an additional speed right there so it's yeah it, that 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 four speed is definitely going to come in handy five with speed set so pretty cool there uh, of course auxiliary lots he is definitely broken uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't say he would need a nerf but bazaar on the other hand uh, something needs to kind of be done about his uh, skill three there's just too many things going on at the same time uh you need to remove one of them uh, <laughs> yeah at least do that because it, it's yeah, definitely very, very powerful uh, kit. Uh, Champion Zerato is a hero that you could use, you know, when you're attacking bazaars. Uh, I mean, he's just gonna be that thread that will 
deal constant damage against him you know and able to be buff debuff will allow him to counter attack and transfer that potentially and uh, the other debuff that he does land that's more counter attacks from uh, champion zerato uh, you could have abyssal crown on him uh, triggering a stun on each of the targets that he will attack so he's attacking two targets every time assuming there's two alive right so a uh, very powerful hero that's one way that i go about it to counter uh you know, uh, bazaars is champion Zerato, and I have him on my defense because uh, I feel like a lot of players that do have bazaar they might be like, eh, yeah, I'm not gonna attack this guy, I'm gonna skip him because I mean, champion Zerato is here, and uh, he is definitely very powerful after the buff, so yeah. Now, for other ways, right, uh, you might have seen a lot of defenses using Lilius. Not only she is very powerful, her whole kit is very powerful, but I mean, she's fire, so there's that. Uh, you have Advantage uh, versus Earth, uh, aka Bazaar. Now, you got the Dispel uh, all debuffs uh, from all allies here, which is a great way to uh, counter Bazaar, because she goes first, and you remove that uh, pesky unable, uh, unable to be buff debuff, and then she's fire, so 50% chance of not getting her uh, combat readiness reduced, so that is very good. And also, it does decrease combat readiness by 25%. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a very powerful hero. And the thing is, I mean, sh this does damage depending how you build her quick crit damage. Uh, you could, like, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, you could mess around with that. But she's got that provoke, very handy, gives her survival as well. And then the constant dual attacks that are triggering from that uh, skill one is uh, quite insane. So a very powerful hero. She's a knight. She can wear Aureus as well as the other strong uh, knight artifacts. So there you go, guys. So of course you could, like I said, go with pure like fire. Uh, that would give you a very high chance to just uh, resist. I mean, have uh, the earth uh, hero or heroes uh, just miss uh, yours. So that's uh, definitely definitely a viable way to go about it. You could go Charon. I mean, you could go Charon uh, and outspeed. Uh, you know, the enemy bazaar as well, 129 base speed is uh, top tier. That, that, that's that's highest speed in the game right there. Uh, unless he's been outsped now, I think he's still number one. Because I've been talking about heroes that have 128 speed. But yeah, he's at 129, so you could uh, do that. But the prime is he will need some insane gear to pull it off. I mean, not only you need the speed, you need the offensive uh, stats, crit crit damage, you need the attack. Definitely not the easiest hero to uh, do it on. And the thing is, uh, the soul burn is on skill 1. So you can't even rely on using souls to increase the damage of his skill 3. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely a viable way. But uh, when you compare how much gear you need on a hero to uh, like that to uh, kill the bazaar versus what they need. Just pure speed with the soul burn. Then... If they are attacking you, uh, you know, uh, with the soul burn. But if you, if it's their defense, yeah, you know, they still need to stack effectiveness. Um, so yeah, full on fire, a way to go about it. If they do have, let's say, immunity set on their bazaar and still like they, they outspeed you or you outspeed them, uh, then there are some strategies that won't work. If you are relying on crippling, uh, if you're not going for the one shot. Uh, then yeah that that's not gonna work he's gonna just follow with uh, his uh, skill three so uh yeah that's the thing but you could definitely use you know uh like lytica if he doesn't have uh you know immunity set the thing is let's assume he has the immunity set right uh and uh yeah let's just think that he has the immunity set that, that's much better of course uh you could, uh, okay, yeah, the cleansing of the enable to be buff debuff, right? Now, let's go over the uh, Soul Weavers. You can always use the Zerg Jewel Bazaar to uh, counter Bazaar. The prime is, and it's been happening to me a lot because I do have uh, DJ Bazaar, is that uh, the Abyssal Crown, if Bazaar has Abyssal Crown, he's going to be able to just uh, stun you. Uh, so, he's dispelling, he's applying enable to be buff debuff, and then there's the stun that can come in after. He's going to strip your immunity set. And then he's going to stun you. That, that, that's just the worst. And even reduce your combat trueness. The thing is, he could just reducing his, your combat trueness without the stun is enough for him to mess up your team. Because uh, it will allow his team to go 
first, the whole team potentially, or he will push back your Desert Jewel Bazaar, and then some of your heroes on your team will go before him, and then it's gonna be all messed up if you if you are relying on buffing. Uh, yeah, it's hell. If you get stunned, it's GG. Uh, it, it like it just makes your hero uh, just. It nullifies your hero. You can't do anything with the Zergio Bazaar when the stun actually lands from Abyssal Crown. And it's a different, you know, it's a different chance. Uh, the thing is, uh, effects that trigger off an artifact uh, doesn't, doesn't need effectiveness on your hero. Uh, that, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure anymore. Someone on the comment section told me, like, it doesn't work like that. You actually need to rely on effectiveness. But I've heard many times that you don't actually need to rely on effectiveness when uh, you want to drop effects from, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your artifact. But you're still susceptible to the... Uh, that's what I've been told, actually. Uh, the elemental advantage. So if there's a 50% chance of uh, them missing you or you missing them because you are at elemental disadvantage, then uh, yeah, the of course the artifact, the effect will not drop, assuming it actually did trigger in the first place though. But yeah, uh, artifacts uh, effects are very powerful. So you could have Abyssal Crown, but not only that, you, oh my God, he's a mage, right? So he has access to, uh, of course you can have uh, Tagihil's Ancient Book straight up on him, maxed out and he can soul burn right off the bat. But if you have him on defense, right? Uh, Syra Ren, Syra Ren, if you check in the effects here, he can actually sleep you. Now, sleep will mess you up real good because you will lose your turn. Not only that, you he's going to strip first, so if he lands the silence, well, you're in a, uh, a bit of a pickle, right? Because you won't be able to use your skill. Uh, so, yeah, that's definitely a viable artifact for him. Just so many ways that things could go wrong with uh, this bizarre, this OP bizarre hero. It's quite unfortunate, but yeah, let's move on to heroes that can just like uh, deal with his enable to be buff debuff, right? So Soul Weaver's here, Desert Jewel Bazaar, yeah, he's a viable uh, hero. The thing is, like I said, uh, there's a, a few uh, checks that, I mean, there's a few things that could go wrong. And when it does go wrong, it's very, very uh, frustrating. So. Yeah, now you could use a, a, a Soul Weaver that can dispel, so you can just uh, take that stupid Unable to be buff debuff off your team. If let's say you're running like some like fast Destina, at least you're gonna have some combat units pushing as well from her skill three after the clans, but her base speed is kind of garbage, right? Right at, at 89, it's so bad. But I mean, that that's one viable way to go about it, I would say. The thing is, uh, you can also use uh, Angelic Momrancy. You would have to skip like the skill 3 unless you use this on a hero that's going next. So she's going to be getting 50% combat trueness. And then you follow with this to re uh, to remove uh, the other, other unable to be buff debuff from the rest of the team. Or you could straight up start with this purification to, so you take it off. So a few ways to go about it. And getting her to 200% effect resistance is not that bad considering like her specialty change plus her self memory imprint giving her even more... Uh, effect resistance so uh, keep that in mind like I mean that's 18% uh, almost 20% from her self memory imprint which is gonna be easy to bring to triple S now uh, who else do we have uh, we actually have a pretty cool hero that could uh, you know that is definitely a way to deal with bazaar uh, you could stick him on your defense and this is actually green Armin. Uh, green Armin with his exclusive equipment can just uh, remove a debuff using skill 3 so keep that in mind and he well uh, he she is uh, a great hero right she can sustain your team uh, she's uh, fairly annoying with uh, this decreased hit chance here poison too maybe you can protect some debuffs using the poison debuff and then you can have the, the stunning if you're attack especially if you are attacking someone that is debuff increases the chance and uh, if you bring, let's say, Green Armin on offense, be it Guild War or Arena, you can bait the AI, fire heroes to attack Armin. So that's another strategy, and uh, she's a knight, so she has access to the great knight artifacts. So another way to uh, deal with uh, Bazaar. Uh, now, the thing is... Bazaar, like I said, is just too powerful. Uh, they will have to do something about him, but I, I feel like they, they won't. They just won't. I mean, they just released a skin for him. It's, uh, yeah, 
definitely not the easiest hero to deal with if you can't rely on outspeeding, right? So if I look at the heroes real quick, uh, you definitely want to, I mean, he nullifies so many heroes that rely on buffing, it's quite ridiculous. Uh, like I said, you can outspeed, you can, uh, you know, cripple him or, or kill him. That's definitely a, a viable way. You could go full on fire or fire heroes with the, with some key heroes. Uh, Lilius, I mean, I'm going to show you guys some gameplay real quick. Uh, but yeah, at least Lilius can actually deal with other debuffs uh, coming your way. So it's not only about countering Bazaars. Uh, the thing is, Bazaar, he's just one hero and he does so much, right, with his kit. The thing is, uh, you still have to worry about the rest of his team, right? I mean, they're going to set up something like, you know, maybe they're going to go with uh, the Soul Burn, uh, Tywin, the Fans Break, and to uh, the skill. You know, you know the deal. You know, the Soul Burn on this thing, grant an extra turn after you get the Fans Broken. And then uh, they give this to uh, the, the Cleaver. And they have 50% crit chance increase plus the attack buff plus combat trueness boosting. I mean, that three-man setup of Bazaar, Tywin, plus a cleaver like Judge Kisei can just uh, destroy your team. Uh, just a three-man setup. So, definitely uh, way too many things packed into one skill, especially on that Bazaar hero. Very ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah. Now, some other ways to deal about uh, this. Uh, okay, yeah. You could use this artifact, right, on uh, on a warrior or warriors. You could use this. Uh, where is it? Uh, warrior. It's a five-star artifact. How? Oh. Or wait, is it not? Okay, crimson seed. Actually, I thought it was five-star. It's four-star, right? So seventy percent chance to dispel one debuff when attacked. Uh, I guess. I guess you could use that on your warrior, but it's not a hundred percent chance. That's that's the thing. Uh, of course, it can definitely be useful uh, all across the battle. Okay, so other ways, right, to deal with uh, Bazaar. So, I mean, one just Potion Vial. Maybe, maybe it's a Guild War and you get lucky with uh, who's going to get, right, uh, dispels or maybe that, right? Uh, I mean, you got Stella Harpa that dispels uh, one debuff from an ally when attacked. It's 60% chance, though. It's not like uh, one just Potion Vial. Now, let's talk about Evasion, right? That's definitely one way to deal with uh, this uh, stupid bazaar. Let's talk about Mirsa. Mirsa can have some insane amount of evasion. You know, you, you put Moonlight Dreamblade on her. I mean, Moonlight Dreamblade could be used on uh, other heroes as well to uh, maybe deal with uh, bazaar. But that's just one hero. I mean, you have to think about the rest of your team. It's just like she's able to get... Uh, 50% evasion right here, then you add uh, a 20% from Moonlight Dreamblade, you are at 70%, and then you add Assassin Cartuja in the team, you add 15%. So that is definitely a huge amount. We're talking 85% evasion with uh, Mirsa on turn one. So she could be a she could be the hero that deals with him, but it's not gonna happen on turn one because uh, you're not going to be gearing her for pure speed, even though she's got 120 speed. Uh, you want to gear her with balanced stats of like high offense and some survival. I mean, you could fully rely on the evasion. They're still going to hit you with... Uh, it's gonna, you're going to... I mean, they're going to miss you. They're going to miss you, but they will still deal... Uh, what is it? 70% uh, uh, of normal damage. They cannot land debuffs. They cannot uh, crit you, so she can definitely uh, stand her ground for a long time. Um, and yeah, she can definitely do a lot of damage. So one way to go about it, right? One way to go about it. So other things, let's let's just go in uh, in arena. So talk, like just like covering all these things, it seems like you need to just work more. You, you need to have a setup. Uh, you need to have a plan, you need to uh, like a hero dedicated to just taking him out, but you still have to deal with the rest of their team. So you can see like Lilius is showing up on defenses uh, quite a lot and uh, yeah, she's an amazing hero, but she definitely helps a lot when it comes down to uh, dealing with Bazaar. Unless uh, he doesn't miss her and he push her combat trueness back, uh, maybe the, their whole team combat trueness and then uh, yeah, you could definitely be in a pickle at that point. So let me actually go in there with uh, 
now we have champion Zerato, right? He's gonna be able to counter attack when uh, debuff lands. He mines at plus 15. My Angelic Momorancy, she's got 200% effect resistance. Uh, she can cleanse the enable to be buff debuff uh, when she goes. So let's let's just see, right? Let's just see what actually happens here. I do have fallen Cecilia, so I don't get like, I mean, I don't get bursted too hard. There's still ML Ken there and Champion Zerato to worry about. So he goes right. There's the the, the strip. The debuff, now Champion Zerato countered. Now, even if you straight up kill him, he already did his job. He didn't even die yet. But he did his job. It doesn't matter if you trigger Elbrus Ritual Sword, if you trigger counters and he just dies. Uh, Bazaar did his job and that's definitely unfortunate. Look, the stun landed on uh, Fallen Cecilia. So she missed her turn. Uh, actually, no, uh, she didn't even go yet because her combat Ness, of course, got pushed back by 30% and she also got stunned. So she's losing that whole turn and she needs to go again 100% combat Ness to be able to, to go. So if I want, I could like use S3 on her, right? So yeah, I, I could do that because ML can, he, uh, I mean, yeah, I could, I could just do that on her. But I don't feel it's going to be the best uh, strategy. Uh, it, the unable to be buffed. You, actually, it's fine. It's fine because look at the combat units on my team, right? ML can get pushed back so much. The whole team got pushed back. So, uh, M uh, Angelique Momorazzi is still going to be able to go before the whole team because she's getting 50% combat units from that skill 3. But look at the damage. I mean, like that's with Aureus. Uh, that, look, look at my... <sighs> Look at my ML Ken. He, thankfully, he leached some life back. So now I can take off the uh, defense break on him, but not on Fawn and Cecilia because it clears the first debuff on the left first. Thankfully, he got a lot of uh, HP back. But yeah, even if he dies, even if Bazaar dies, uh, straight off the bat from Elbris Ritual Sword, counter and all that, he did his job and the longer he stays in the battle the, the, the i mean the more annoying he becomes uh the attack break uh the tr 100 transfer debuff with skill one i believe it's 100 percent from what i remember uh, i mean his kit is completely packed uh it's just too powerful it's just too powerful you see ml can dealt the most damage there champion zirato even though i bring him like for dealing with bazaar Still was not like, like didn't do that much damage. He's plus 15, he's got pretty high offense. Ha doesn't have 100% crit chance. I can show you the stats real quick. But you see his kit, I mean, uh, okay, the chance goes up. It's 75% chance, it's not 100% chance. So it's still very high though. Uh, just straight up transfers a debuff from the caster to the enemy. Uh, oh, of course, you got a random debuff inflicted, right? Uh, are you kidding? Silence, decrease defense, uh, decrease attack, unhealable. And silence and unhealable can be pretty disruptive if you're trying to sustain your team. Uh, and then you even decrease defense, uh, increase the offense of their team, and then decrease attack, cut their attack in half. It, it's very powerful still for a skill one. Uh, I mean, decrease hit chance and attack break is just too much. It, it's too much. This heavily cripples them. Uh, I mean, this is those are the two best uh, defensive debuffs in the game. Uh, it's just way too many things going on here. And this is an AoE, of course, only on a three-turn cooldown. He's just going to be able to cycle through his stuff so fast because he is very high speed. But it depends how you build him. Uh, if you go... Even with pure speed, he's still going to be getting some survival. If you're lucky enough, if you're fort fortunate enough to get some health percentage, maybe defense percentage, uh, main stats on the right side, got your speed boots, he can get some pretty solid survival. He is squishy though. He's definitely squishy, so not going to be too hard to one-shot him, assuming you want, uh, you are able to go first. But man, oh man, like... This is uh, this is 75% chance to apply these two debuffs for two turns. It's completely ridiculous, but definitely the skill 3 is where it's at with the soul burn that ignores effect resistance. It just does too many things, right? You got that, that godlike dispel that comes in first before doing the, uh, the debuff and then the uh, combat readiness reduction. It, it's uh, quite ridiculous. And then 
uh, of course, at least his survival is low, so allowing you to uh, to one-shot him. But it's not that terrible. The thing is, if you're going first, you're not going to be able to land that defense break. So you will have to go through his defense stats. So to be honest, like it's pretty solid to get defense percentage to increase the survival of Bazaar on turn one, because uh, you're not going to have defense break. Uh, if you want to just survive against that, like that one shot, uh, even his health, it, to be honest, his survival stats are not that bad. They're not that bad for considering how powerful he is. Uh, so yeah, now let me just show you uh, the stats of my heroes real quick before I go back into the arena. Uh, yeah, talk more about Bazaar and why he is that OP and how you could deal with him, right? Uh, I mean, I didn't bring Charles here. Uh, just going to show the stats real quick. Champion Zerato, not 100% uh, crit chance, but I mean, I had to go with the, the crit damage necklace because, I mean, it, it, yeah, that, that crit damage is way too sweet. So Abyssal Crown on him, and uh, yeah, Fire Can, I mean, you could be using that against Bazaar. Um, uh, Bazaar does lose value if, you, uh, if he's brought into, uh, you know, Guild War or he's on defense of Guild War. It's it's not it's easier to deal with because uh, they cannot do the same amount of damage that they can do in arena because it's four v four and they only have three men in uh, guild war so it's not so bad right? ML can if you want to counter his face and take him out still he did his job though he still did his job. Uh, Angelic Momorensi that's her, uh, her stats. So many heroes that you can just you cannot bring if you don't have a countermeasure against this enable to be buff debuff. If you are heavily relying on buffs, he heavily cripples you. I mean, Alencia at least she's got the dispel. I like to bring her. Uh, she's not a bazaar, but still uh, she's tough. She does the dispel and she also increases defense for your team. Can provide defense break and some damage, some potential burst damage. Um, yeah, so my bazaar doesn't have the speed that I want. He does have some effectiveness, but uh, to be honest, uh, yeah, I don't like where it's at. And uh, yeah, so if you are relying, like I said, on buffs like the you know the fans buff on, on your crowd, uh, he, he's ice, so that's that's definitely not helpful. Versus Earth Assassin Kartuja, he could be that hero that uh, help you evade, but it's a chance. It's not a hundred percent reliable. That's the thing, though. That is the thing. Mm, I mean, Fallen Cecilia, you know, her skill nullifier is going to be taken off. So you need to have a countermeasure to uh, strip that enable to be buff debuff. Uh, General Purgus is definitely a hero that can be used against a uh, bazaar. Like, uh, you can use him. So uh, if they're doing AoE attacks, especially if he's with, uh, like, Seaside Bellona, if there's a constant stream of AoE attacks coming, uh, coming toward you, you are able to increase your combat readiness. Uh, of the whole team by uh, what is it your 13% I don't have skill ups on this this thing 18% because look that thing uh, it's very good 18% is a lot and this can definitely allow you to cut in between him and uh, don't forget General Purgus he's definitely great uh, against Bazaar you get a lot of value from that combat shooting uh, from that passive Desertual Bazaar definitely can be used the thing is if you outspeed Bazaar, it's over. It's over because you you can't do anything. You can't do anything. If you decide to to wait for using S3, it's going to be too long. It's going to be too long. They're going to do their thing. They're going to take you apart. Uh, so you need to make sure that Bazaar is going to go uh, on the enemy team. is going to go first. So then you can clear the enable to be buff debuff with uh, this and apply the immunity. But that, that, that's a problem. That can definitely be a problem, especially like the Abyssal Crown and the Syra Ren that can mess you up with stun or, or uh, you know, sleep or even silence. Definitely can mess you up. Uh, Kates can clear the enable to be buff debuff. She's fire as well, so that's great. May Chloe gets nullified if you don't have a way to deal with the enable to be buff debuff. So, yeah, definitely a problem. Definitely a problem. Uh, so let's go back here in the arena. But yeah, those are like uh, the things that I wanted to talk about. Let's go here against uh, a team that, uh, well, bizarre, that team too. They don't have sustain, but that the Apocalypse Ravi could uh, stay in there for a while. Um, that's the thing. And they... <laughs> Okay, let, let's go in there. Let's go in there. That's there's Purgus in there. There's Bazaar, there's Champion Zerato. He, like heroes I've been talking about, right? Heroes I've been talking about. And there's always the strategy of, let's say, bringing Apocalypse Ravi to take out their whole team and just 
standing, being there and being alive still with her. And because uh, that constant stream of like uh, that sustain from her passive is quite ridiculous. Assuming you built her with uh, the right stats, if she does have the offense enough survival to take the burst, you still have to deal with those pesky debuffs, right? Uh, the thing is uh, that tag break and uh, decrease hit chance will definitely uh, mess you up if uh, if you can't deal with them. So maybe uh, 